Unfolding the eternal excellences, the hidden insights of the truth and the depth of the riches of wisdom and knowledge. The Bible says, I have cleansed thee by the word. I have not pointed to your weaknesses. He says, I have cleansed thee by the word. I have pointed to your strength. And this is your strength, that I am Christ in you, the hope of glory. The glory of freedom, the glimpses into eternity. The gospel is not supposed to be an assumption. It's not supposed to be just a mere presupposition. Truth is older than language, but the word of God is way deeper than any human language. And now, Apostle Grace with the Word. Sa 
is any sick among us, just put your hand where it's fading. God is healing the sick right now. God is healing the sick. I see His Spirit moving. God is healing a blood issue. right now. You've been feeling like things. They're like insects. God is delivering you right now. And you are going to run back. But God changes it in the name of Jesus Christ. has been feeling like it's falling out. Has been feeling like it's falling out. God is healing you right now in the name of Jesus. If you have not been able to move your joints for some time, start moving it. There is somebody who can lead me on your left leg. You have a pro- you had a problem, your leg was staining on your leg just in the ankle area. Check it right now. God is healing it right this very moment in the name of Jesus. Somebody. Somebody with hypertension. You checked about a week ago. They told you that your blood pressure is high. Go back for a checkup tomorrow. In the name of Jesus. I feel diabetes living in the name of Jesus Christ. Living. There is somebody who has been having a problem in your chest. Just like where I'm holding right now. God, there's something that's been blocking you. God is delivering you right now. You spirit of infirmity, I command you to come out. There's another one with a pain in your, it has been on your right side. right side, inside your lungs, in the meat, like it's like in the back, but it's in your lungs, when you breathe, you got it in the morning, early morning you woke up with a pain, 
God is delivering you right now in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. If you're here and you've made up your mind to close your business a few days ago because it was dying, I want you to put up your hands. I want to pray for you right now. I was going to close business because it was dying. You had a soul to close it. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I speak life to what is dying. I speak life to what is dying. And I decree that at the sound of my voice, you're going to testify in a few days from now. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus. There's a lady here. Your husband has not come back for the past three days. But God tells me to tell you. He's going to come back. Tonight. 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 Somebody give the Lord a mighty hand clap of praise. If, if you are healed and you're here and pain left you, I want you to put up your hands right now. If you came with any sickness and you were healed, I want you to put up your hands. Put it up. Straight. Wow. Straight. Straight. I'll give you only five minutes. For those of you who feel it was serious, come. Okay, and testify. Only five minutes of testimony. Come, come, come. Now I'll need somebody, a man of, a man of God, Apostle M. I just stand here. I want you to repeat what the Lord has healed them of, and then you tell it to us, and then we clap for God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hurry very quickly. I want to give it in five minutes, and then we'll get out of here. Spirit of God is here. Quickly, hurry. You don't want to testify? Hurry, quickly. I saw many. I saw many hands. Hurry up, hurry up, hurry also, up. Hurry. This is powerful. You spoke of a lady who, who thought like where her heart was getting out. This is her. She had a kidney issue. She was diagnosed with a kidney issue. She had a very sharp pain and her heart was feeling the way it was you you like it's falling out. Yeah, it's that like it was falling out. The moment you mentioned this, her heart got settled inside and the pain left immediately. And she's totally and totally okay. Somebody clap your hands for Jesus. Praise God. Give me your hands. In the name of Jesus. It's gone. Come on. Very quickly, very quickly. I don't know why my mic is misbehaving. The power of God is here. Yes, quickly. She had a very severe back pain for the past one month. Constant pain. And it just left immediately. Somebody clap for Jesus. Praise God. Come and testify quickly. Can I see those of you who are healed again? If you were healed, put up your hands and I see them. Why are you seated there? Come quickly. Come quickly. Don't worry. It will take us. Is, he had severe pain in the stomach because of severe ulcers. And the pain ceased immediately and his comfort. Somebody clap for Jesus. Well. Come and testify. It's going to be a quick one. During worship, she was healed of... She had toothache and severe pain in the chest. Clap for Jesus. And she's healed now. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Quickly. Don't worry, we'll give it a few minutes and then I'll start teaching. Sorry? Sorry? He was going to have a surgery. He had severe pain in the tooth. Mm. And he was going to have a surgery. He even has the appointments of the doctor now. But he feels he's very okay. He feels the pain is gone. How is your tooth feeling? Mm. You couldn't chew? Yes. The pain is gone totally. I can chew. That's what I'm trying to say. I don't feel the pain no more. You came with it? He came with it. I came with it. He came with it and... He, he was going to be operated tomorrow. 
He has an appointment with the doctor. Somebody clap for Jesus. Thanks God. No operation. <laughs> God bless you. Quickly. Quickly. Apostle, this one you prayed for her mother. She had cancer. The you mother prayed had for cancer. her. Yes, you prayed for her. And results came back yesterday. You prayed for her on Monday. Results came back yesterday and she is cancer free. Somebody clap for Jesus. <laughs> oh yes, I was in hospital with her. Kampala Hospital. Somebody oh she was very badly off the woman. Clap for Jesus. Apostle, this is an eye problem that was sorted. She had she felt like stones were running in her eyes. But as worship began, everything became the eye clear. The eye I see cleared. the left one. Eh? Praise God. Amen. God bless you. Quickly. I want to give it very quickly. Huh? Yeah. He had a lung damage from 2013. Yeah, the what? Lung damage from 2013. A lung damage. Yes. From 2013. Yeah, and it has, he has been carrying severe pains in the chest. Since 2013. Since 2013. And now he is healed. You're totally healed. He totally no pain. Healed. No pain. Since 2013. Yes, sir. Somebody give the Lord a mighty hand of praise. Praise the Lord. He had what? Quickly. We have a few more minutes. Two or three to go. That's why I wanted the pastors to tell me. He had burning heat in his body, majorly in the back. For how long? For a week. For a week. Mm. Now you're okay? And the sensation Clap is for gone Jesus, now. Somebody. House has for eight years. She feels she's very healed. The pain now. is gone. Somebody Praise clap for Jesus. The Lord. Pain in the heart. Now she feels she's very okay. You came with the pain in your heart? Mm. Give me your hand. In the name of Jesus Christ, it will not be hard again. In Jesus' mighty name. <laughs> a swelling has just disappeared from a her back. A swelling has just disappeared <laughs> from her back. <laughs> Somebody clap for Jesus. A swelling has just gone. Mm. You had it. How long has it been? One month. Where exactly was it? It was around there. It was painful. Give the mic. It was painful and it was all over the back. All back. Like a, a huge swelling all yeah, over the back. Some swelling. This side and then it comes this side and then at the same time this side. For all? For one man. Stand the clap for Jesus. Amen. Most of these women have had pain. Uh, we had yeah. a lot of them. And then the pain in the back. You talked about it, and as you prayed, the pain has gone. Somebody clap for Jesus. He name. had a chest pain for the past three weeks. Chest pain for the past three weeks. Yeah, and his heal is perfectly well. Praise done. God. Amen. I feel God is opening somebody's nose. Eh? You've been having a series of sinuses, and your noses have been blocked. Check them. Check your nose. If you're not you put up your hand. Put up. I feel God is clearing your nose. That's cleared. Somebody clap for Jesus. Apostle, she had a severe pain in the stomach. She couldn't even see it at the particular point since last night. She came and it was still too severe, but as worship was on, as we kept praying, the pain is gone. Somebody clap for Jesus. Amen. The mic, the mic here is not working. Yeah? Over here. Over here. Yes. It has gone. As you pray, it is gone. How long was it? Three days. Somebody clap for Jesus. The same thing, sir. Chest pain has just disappeared in his chest. Somebody clap for Jesus. Very well now. Sir. Somebody clap for Jesus. Uh huh. The pain in her leg. The left. The, it was not the one with yeah. The pain on the left. Oh, it's gone. Somebody clap for Jesus. She's a sick girl. She had the pain. She's been feeling pain. But as you pray. The pain. For how long has it been? 29 years. So it's been a sick one. For 29 years. Come. I also see something not right in your blood. Give me your hand. In the name of Jesus, I command that spirit of your family and disease to lose you. Go! 
in Jesus' mighty name. Somebody clap for Jesus. I want you to tap a sharp pain in the right lung. Pain in the right lung? Yes. It has disappeared. It has gone. Somebody yes. clap for Jesus. Amen. And the stomach ache has disappeared. Clap for Jesus. It's healed and perfectly well. A few more to go. She had a toothache since April this year. What? And it's gone. <laughs> People have seen Big God. Somebody clap for Jesus. Hallelujah. <laughs> that back pain and then uh, and then the new pain. Any oh God. Yeah. For how long? Like from last year. From last year? Yeah. I was sleeping and then beat myself on the ground and he said I You got an injury pain. since last year. Yeah. Now it's here. Yeah, it's here. It's Somebody clap for Jesus. Severe stomach ache has just left her. Sorry? Severe stomach ache. Severe stomach ache. Yeah. She has just left her. And where? Come. Are you married or are you not married? Where is he? Where is he? Okay, he didn't come. He did not come. But you, we need to pray for him. Give me your hand. Father, in the name of Jesus. Help them as a family. God, fix whatever has to be fixed. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray and believe. Amen. Quickly. He has, had a, he has been busy for the last one and a half month. And they, they had also the same problem with the heart. Yeah. Now the pain is gone. It's gone. Totally. How was the pain? Yes. Yes. Tell me. The, the pain is completely gone from the heart. Yeah. Yeah. And my head, which has been busy for about one and a half months, is also gone. Somebody clap for Jesus. <laughs> Apostle, she, her eyes could hurt when she looks into light, but she's now clear and she had a light sinuses in the eyes. Yeah, sinuses have left. And the sinuses have left. Yes, sir. Somebody clap for Jesus. Praise God. That pain for years. For how many years? She doesn't know that she's been there for years. Yeah? She has been just there. You don't remember even the years. Now the pain is gone. Somebody clap for Jesus. Apostle, this is the lady who had things working in her head, who almost want, was going to run mad. You called out the circumstance and she is healed completely well. Somebody clap for Jesus. My mother came last... Bring her for me. Hmm? Yeah. My mother came last week and she had had liver problem and lots of complications for 15 years. She called me today screaming that she's absolutely fine. The entire neighborhood, they got a video, she is, she was screaming. Somebody clap for Jesus. <laughs> Give me a hand. Somebody speak to witchcraft. This was witchcraft. Speak to it now. In the name of Jesus, you spirit of witchcraft, we command you out. Go! In the name of Jesus, and never should you return again. She will not die. She will not run mad. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed and believed. Somebody clap for Jesus. Hallelujah. Give your neighbor a high five and tell them you had to be here today. Turn to the other one also and tell them you had to be here today. <laughs> Hallelujah. We want to recognize the presence of the men and women of God in the house. Pastor Richard Roharusa, you're welcome. Hallelujah. Pastor Ram is here. The other men of God whose names are unworthy to introduce. Ah, ha, ha, ha. I love your faith. There are some pastors from Mukono. I don't know that they came today. Mukono. Yeah, those are pastors from Mukono. <laughs> and bishops. Hallelujah. We respect the anointing of God upon your life. Pastor Zach is in the house. The Bukenyas are in the house. Apostle Emma, of course. Hallelujah. Pastor Tessa of the remnant of grace. Hallelujah. <laughs> Some local person read the name of the church. He was remnant. And he said, Abu Illuminati. <laughs> People need help. <laughs> My mom is here. Hallelujah. The, and I have my uncle Joseph is here. Hey, the whole house is here. Ah! Praise God. The man of God from Rwanda is here. <laughs> Hallelujah.
Apostle Muhammad Moses, it's great to have you. My God, we've missed you. Hallelujah. Mama Modesta, Pastor um, Brian from Bokafu. <laughs> Pastor Sam and his wife. Eh, you're all welcome, men and women of God. Uh, my mother is there. Some other brother of mine. Oh my goodness. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And a few apostles and prophets, teachers. <laughs> The, the Prime Minister is in the house somewhere down there. Uh, <laughs> hallelujah. Choir, thank you. Praise God. The children's camp, you have announced it. Where is it? I'm told you changed the venue. St. Catherine, where? In Sunday. I'm told they changed the venue. It wasn't looking... Fanero like. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Thank you very much. 31st, we're going to be here. We're going to fill this whole place. Praise God. That day, please bring wheelchairs, people in wheelchair. Don't bring flu. That day, bring people in wheelchairs. That day, we want to get people on bed from Mulago, Mengo. If they can release your person, we dare. That the Lord, you bring them that day. Hallelujah. God has told me that day is going to be great. Manifestations of signs, miracles, and wonders. Hallelujah. And of course, God is going to tell us what's going to happen in 2017. Praise God. Everything we spoke this year has come to pass. Do you agree? Praise God. So, 2017, we're going to be here. 31st and the 1st, we're going to be the whole of this ground. It's, we're going to fill it. We're not going to have a tent that day because there's going to be a lot of people. Hallelujah. So, uh, carry somebody that day. But that day bring complicated issues. Eh? Don't bring simple things. Bring things that scare you, even you, to pray for. Hallelujah. <laughs> bring someone. When you look at them, you say, ah, this one. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Hallelujah. Ah, I feel something tonight. Do you feel it? Do you feel it? Do you feel it? Timothy, 1 Timothy 6, verses 12. This is a very famous verse, but rarely understood. Hallelujah. Praise God. Are we there? Are we there? The Bible says, fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life, whereunto thou art also called and hast professed a good profession before many. Hallelujah. And the next verse says, I give thee charge in the sight of God, who quickeneth all things, and before Christ Jesus, who before Pontius Pilate witnessed a good confession, that thou keep this commandment without spot unrebukable till the appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ. Somebody say amen. amen. Now, he tells him that I, come, I ask you, I charge thee by God, that you keep, you keep this commandment without spot, unrebukable, until the appearing of our Lord and Savior, Jesus. Now, the Bible tells us very clearly, and all of you agree and understand this, or perhaps some of you have stumbled on the scripture, that There are things in the scriptures that were commandments to the saints. Hallelujah. They were not just appeals. They were not just admonitions. They were not just exhortations. They were commandments. And some of the commandments of God are interpreted through instruction. And that is why when Jesus is talking to his disciples, he instructs them, to teach them in the things he has commanded them. Are we together? So, certain things come as commandments, but they are teachings. They are instructions. Hallelujah. Some things, in fact, the things of Christ, many are things of Christ, which were commandments to the church, but were translated as instruction, and therefore are taught Okay, because those are the commandments of the dispensation of the New Testament. Matthew twenty-eight twenty says, 
teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded thee. And he says, for lo, I'm with you all the way until the end of the world. Amen. They were, they were commandments. Jesus commanded them. But every time they transition from commandment to the church, they have to come out as teaching. Are we together? If they are commanded without instruction, then the spirit of truth is frustrated. I don't know if I'm making sense. The spirit of truth is frustrated if commandments of the New Testament dispensation are not released as instruction. Are we together? So he says, fight the good fight of faith. That was not an appeal to the church. Paul was not encouraging Timothy. Hallelujah. You must understand that he, this was a son of his loins. He says, for I knew no man of like spirit like Timothy. Are we together? The, 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 the letter to Timothy is, was, was like a, 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 a teaching of, 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 of a, a bishop to a pastor. It was most understood by men which were going to walk the front line of the gospel and were willing to risk many things for the sake of what they believed. Somebody say amen. So he says, fight the good fight of faith, lay hold of eternal life, where unto our author has been called and has professed a good profession before many. He was commanding us. He wasn't asking us. This is a place of obedience. Hallelujah. It's not a place of request. It was a place of obedience. And that is why he tells you that this I charge thee by God, that you keep this commandment blameless without fault until the coming of our Lord and Savior Jesus. Because there is offense if you do not obey this fully. There are many expectations of God from you and the participation of the same to obey this as a charge, as a commandment for you to know the next verse, verse 12. He says that thou art keep this commandment without spot, unrebukable, without spot until the coming of our Lord and Savior, Jesus. This was uncompromising. This was something they were not even supposed to be talking about. It was supposed to be so. It wasn't something we need to tell you, oh, you fight, don't fight. We appeal to you, try to fight. It's not a request. It's truth. And it's a command by God. But, how be it, the Bible says, we speak these things in a mystery. Hallelujah. And to them which are mature, the Bible says, we impart these things. Somebody say, Amen. Amen. Now, I want to give you the instruction of this command. I want to give you the instruction of this command. There has been a very big misunderstanding and misinterpretation of the scriptures in line with this grossly. I always say the word, grossly. Mutilated. In the sense that many people, when you talk about fighting, the fight of faith, something comes into their head and they imagine, I think this is what they mean by fighting. But many of the interpretations of what it means to fight is not really the truth about fighting. Are we together? And I'm going to explain that. Some people think that they were, when you're a Christian, eh? The way you fight is you get in a ring with the devil. Eh? Then they put four squares and what? And ropes. Then you start. Ding, ding, ding. Go. Right? Da, 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 pa. Da, 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 pa. He won round one. Right? Then a woman comes. Then she puts it down. Then you go for round two. Da, 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 you know? Right? And that is why many testimonies come with some part of defeat on them. The pains, I, I struggled for 20 years, but finally, you know? <laughs> right? You, you've been around, you, 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 am, am I relating with somebody here? I did this for this ma, this long, I have done this for this many years, and, but finally, we have one, right? They put their winning in what they see. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. They, they, they misunderstand the whole place of fighting. There is a reason why the Bible says that the fight is of faith. Hallelujah. 
The fight is of faith. And what is faith? Faith is a substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. And he says, by it elders obtained a good report. The word there for elders are people who have matured in it. You will start producing results when you mature in fighting the fight of faith. Hallelujah. And so many people say, ah, but what does it mean to fight the fight of faith? And says, I think you, many, and many of you, it's because of the situations that have stayed in your life for so long. Right? You've believed God for a job for six years, and then your head tells you that you're fighting some things until you get the job, right? Oh, you've believed God for children for 20 years, and you say, now I think my body's, I'm fighting in the spirit to see that I get what? Babies, right? Or a husband or a wife or a certain business, there's a certain paper you've put on the table, people have refused to respond to it. Some of you are stuck. You're stuck. I don't know if I'm making sense. You're what? You're stuck. When you look at your finances, you're stuck. When you look at your personal life, you're stuck. You even wake up every day and go to work, but you're what? You're stuck. You, 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 you work hard sometimes. You, you, yes, you're, you're waking up every morning, right? And the only thing changing on you is that your clothes are growing old, your shoes are withering, right? Your bag is staring, but you're stuck. You're stuck in one place. And then that delusion then says, aha, I think now I have to fight. Okay, how do we fight? Now we are going to go back. I think there's a spirit of the generational curses. Right? And then they start what? Breaking the things of the generational castes. Those things which your grandfather said on your life. You see my eyes that were taken where? You know, there are some people who actually are affected by those things. But they're not affected because those things have power. They're affected because they don't know who they are. In Christ. Hallelujah. Then you start breaking this. Then you say, eh, I think there's a problem on this mountain. Then you go to another mountain. <laughs> you know, even in Jesus' days, there were people who used to swing from different mountains. You remember? When he was talking to the, the, the Samarian woman, he says, in that day you shall neither worship from this mountain or that mountain. They go hopping mountain to mountain, deliverance service to deliverance service, place of prayer to place of prayer. Why? There's something, it held me. I don't know what, but I think I have a problem. You understand? <laughs> then they start crying. <laughs> Hallelujah. And then they live all their lives fighting and fighting and fighting. And then they grow old fighting and then they die fighting, but the wrong way. Psalms 94, verses 12. I want to introduce you to something. Give me the amplifier. Psalms 94, verses 12. Now, I want us to read all of us. It says, blessed or happy, fortunate, to be envied. Is the man whom you discipline and instruct, O Lord, and teach out of your law. Are you seeing? And what does the next verse say? That you may give him power to keep himself calm in the day of adversity until the inevitable pit of corruption is dug for the wicked. Oh! 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 I don't know whether you read that. I don't know whether you read that. I don't know whether you read that. I don't know whether some of you read that. He says that you may keep him. He says he's fortunate. He's blessed. He says he is blessed. That man is to be envied. That man is happy. That man is happy. Somebody say I'm happy. Yes. The Bible says that kind of man is happy. And that man will be envied. People will look at him and say, oh, How does she do it? Are you hearing me? And that person will be fortunate. The word is fortune there. They will attract things. Things will start following them up. Why? Because, listen, how, the, how God does it. He instructs, he disciplines, he disciplines. And instructs a man and teaches him out of his law. And what does it teach him? Next verse says, he teaches him that he may give him power to keep himself calm. So, what? Oh, oh. Not to become more aggressive. Sha-la-la-la-la. Sha-la-la-la-la. 
No. He teaches you to remain calm. And to keep yourself cool in your days of adversity. Until the inevitable pit of corruption is dug for the wicked. And what does the next verse say? The next verse says, For the Lord will not cast off nor span his people. Neither will he abandon his heritage. The true spirit of warfare by faith is when you learn by God to be calm. Not to become restless. I think this is an attack. I think this is an attack. In the name of Jesus. I cannot, ref- I refuse it. I, I, I rebuke you. They even rebuke Jesus in the process. I rebuke you Jesus in the name. Oh, sorry. I rebuke you. I, 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 I can't, re- you know. They're restless. They're restless. They're restless. They're restless. When a man is told by God. And situations come. That man comes down. Why? Because his law, his word teaches you to calm down. It teaches you to just say, okay, yes, it is coming. But what is there to shake me? The doctor says you have HIV. You look at them and laugh and say, ha, ha, ha. I'm still calm. It's hard to be calm when you're supposed to be anxious. Because circumstances are there. A young lady called me a few weeks ago and told me, Apostle, 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 pray. Apostle, pray. I said, eh, where is this coming from? <laughs> the examinations. We've reached the examinations. I don't have money. I don't have money. And I told a woman, relax. Relax. This is one thing I learned. God has a way of coming in when the devil thinks he has won. There, there are points where it doesn't even look apparent that you're going to win. Eh? That point, Gabalaba, you really lost it. Then God comes in. There's a young group of students in their exams. I hope next Thursday they'll come and they'll tell you. I was driving. Where was I going? I don't remember. But I had probably two people in the car. And then this kid calls me at, in a Roman, a Roman Catholic school, in secondary school, and says, the kid calls me and tells me that one of her friend, their friends in the morning woke up and ran mad. And then a friend came to, rest, to hold her. She was trying, becoming uh, uh, aggressive. She also ran mad. Then a third one came and also ran mad. Three kids. Then they took to the dispensary. <laughs> <laughs> I, they will come next Thursday. A guy came and says, I have to testify this apostle. So they call me. These kids are supposed to be going in exams. And they call me and they tell me, apostle, these kids, they've run mad. But the one who ran mad first, that one is mad. <laughs> they've locked her in a room plus her friends. They don't know what to do. And at that particular point, eh, I wondered, am I going to get a phone and I tell her, start putting a, po- a phone on each one of them. You spirit, in the name of Jesus, live. Then get to another one. You spirit, in the name of Jesus, live. Then I say, even you live. Go, 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 go. You're not even sure whether they're on Airtel and they've paid mega bonus or Airtel might suck out. True story. They'll come hopefully next Thursday. They promise they'll come and I'll show them to you. When I was in the middle of driving, my spirit says, Is it worth it that I'm going to pack my car and scream on something that can live even at my throat? (laughs) Ah! Let me tell you, if you don't learn to run a bit mad, you cannot see God. In my spirit, I say no. The devil is not worth me packing to address three kids possessed by devils. And I told the kid on the telephone, I told the kid, call me after one hour from now. If those demons have not left, you call me. (laughs) And then when the kid hung up, in my spirit I said, you had me. (laughs) Ten minutes later, apostle, all of them are sober. 
all of them are sober. All of them are sober. It's not by power, nor by might, but by my spirit, said the Lord of hosts. And you carry the Holy Ghost. But he was in the comfort of my car. I didn't need to first lose peace and appetite. And I said, this is an attack. This, this is an attack. This is an attack. No. When it comes in, come down. That's called a fight of faith. Why? Because you still hold the substance of what you hope for. And you still carry the evidence of things not seen. Even though things are moving negative, you still believe it is well. That is called spiritual warfare. The fight of faith is maintaining the state of what you see in your world. In spite of what the other world is trying to bring on you. Because it says the Bible says, by faith we understand that the worlds were created. Worlds are just created a beings by faith. And by the word. The Bible says that word is nigh It's in thine mouth. That means you can create your own world. You wake up and they tell you it is failing. You just dress success. Or oh, I preach to the machines. I say to wake up and they tell you you're old. You just preach new. You create your world in spite of what is happening. And if in that world you're supposed to be happy. You be happy. Now, did you see how he deals with this man? He teaches him to be calm. He teaches him, that man, to keep himself calm in the days of adversity. That's what he teaches that man. When, oh, that's what the word of God does. It calms us down. They tell you this is happening. You calm down. You act like it. You're in danger. You're in trouble. Any time from now, you're, this is going to happen. And then you walk calmly like nothing is happening. Like nothing is happening. Like nothing is happening. Let me teach you something I've learned with this book of faith. If you can write, write it. Whatever you fight, you ignite. Whatever you fight, you what? You ignite. In other words, everything you're fighting, carnally, right? You give power. You give power. You give power. I don't know if I'm making sense. Some of you, you're fighting the wrong fight. When the Bible says, fight the good fight of faith, it's okay to ignite faith. Because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. But some of you are fighting the negative stuff instead of the fight of faith. You're supposed to fight to believe. Not to fight against those things that are against you. Some people wake up every morning in the name of Jesus. I refuse this spirit of infirmity. I refuse it. I refuse it. I cancel it. I cancel it. You know the Bible tells us of a certain woman who went to an unrighteous judge. And then she told the judge, plead my case. And the judge refused. And then she went there the second time, plead my case. And the judge refused. And then she went there the third time, plead my case. And the judge refused. For three, until the judge was tired and he said, okay, now that you're too much on me, let me judge your case. Jesus is not a wicked judge. That was a wicked judge. Not Jesus. Je Jesus is the righteous judge. You feel pain. Then you say, I rebuke it in the name of Jesus. Then again you feel it. I rebuke it in the name of Jesus. Then again you feel it again. I rebuke it. I devil you are eyeing. Uh, no. You have to get to a point where it comes and you feel it. And you say, ha, ha. <laughs> You're joking. You're joking. I don't even have time to address you. You keep cool. Something pierces your, your, your heart. And you act like it was a simple itch. Then you go back to work. 
<laughs> what you fight with night. So many of you are in unnecessary battles. Because you're fighting things that were already defeated. And God has no way of explaining to you, you're wasting time. So if I build the very things I destroyed, he says, I make myself a transgressor. You're in the center of transgression. In the center of transgression. He that knew no sin. That's why I told people, do you know the scripture that is killing sick sick people most? Isaiah 53 verse 5. There's no scripture killing the sick like that scripture. Ah, but apostle, what do you mean? He says, but he was wounded for transgressions, he was bruised by iniquities, and the chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we were healed. Right? We were healed. We're healed, meaning there's a provision of sickness. Then you are healed. By his stripes we are healed. By his stripes we are healed. You fall sick, then you get healed. Then you fall sick, then you get healed. Then you fall sick, then you get healed. So, you're in the stripes we are healed. As long as the disease comes, I will be healed. You see? So you're in the glory of healing, not divine health. No, read it. He says he was wounded for transgressions. He was bruised for iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes we are healed. That statement, we are healed, provides that there is a definite agreement in your spirit and recognition that you fall sick. And First Peter 24 said, ah, 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 new creature, new creature, new creature. He says... He his own self bore our sin in his own body on the tree. That we being dead to sins should live unto righteousness. By whose stripes? He says, ye were. Eh, eh. He says, ye were. Not you are. Ye were healed once and for all. That means that the miracle of the new creature is divine health. Not divine healing. You don't need to get it first to remove it out of your head. No. You don't need to get it. That's why I told people, when you feed on this stuff, you're going to forget falling sick. Because I'm positive when was the last time Musimanya, Apostle Emma is not preaching, but he's sick. Ah, 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 ah. Refuse it. Say, ha, na you are a bit unrealistic. No, you were taught wrongly. <laughs> Mine is divine health. They, there's no glory in falling sick. Mine is what? Divine Divine health. Somebody say in the name of Jesus. I walk in divine health. In divine health. No sickness. In Jesus mighty name. Yeah, because it was done. It was fixed. It was dealt with at Calvary. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You learn to rest. You learn to rest. In Chronicles, you remember when David uh, goes to, to, to the son, Solomon? First Chronicles chapter 22. First Chronicles 22, verse 6. I want to show you something. The Bible says, Then he called Solomon, who? His son. And charged him to build a house for the Lord God of Israel. And David said to Solomon, My son, as for me... It was in my mind to build a house unto the name of the Lord my God. But he says, but the word of the Lord came unto me saying, thou hast shed blood abundantly and hast made great wars. You're too much in war. I can't dwell where war is. I can't build my presence where there is war. He says, thou shalt not build a house unto my name because thou hast shed much blood upon the earth in my sight. And the next verse says, Behold, a son shall be born to thee, who shall be a man of... Somebody say, I'm a child of rest. Say it again. He says that a son shall be born, who shall be a man of rest, and I will give him rest from all his enemies. It doesn't mean that the enemies are not there. No. But even in the middle of their enmity, he's resting. Oh, 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 oh. I don't know that you understand what I'm saying. People are fighting you, but you're resting. Attacks are coming on every side, but you're resting. Somebody say amen. He said, I will give him rest from all his enemies round about. For his name shall be Solomon. And I will give him peace and quietness unto Israel all his days. 
He says, that is where I can dwell. And I realize that God can't build tabernacles where there is war. Okay, he can't dwell where men are conscious of war. He dwells in rest. You remember Mark? Mark 12, 36. That's what David says. He says that, Mark 12, 36 says, For David himself said, by the Holy Ghost, the Lord said unto my Lord. Who was the Lord? Who was his Lord? God said unto Christ. David walked in the spirit. Eh? Eh? And then he saw a certain conversation between God the Father and Christ. Alright? And he saw God the Father telling Christ, Sit on my right hand till I make your enemies your foot. Sit. Sit. Tell your neighbor, sit. Settle. Until I make your enemies your footstool. He didn't tell him, intercede, become restless. No, he told him, sit down. Now, <laughs> that is why when Jesus came, he also told you, uh uh-uh, sit, rest. When you are in the middle of things like that, let me. That is why when something overwhelms me, I go to sleep. I go to what? To sleep. And sleep, I force it. If it refuses, I count sheep. I speak in tongues. It has to come. Because the Bible says he provides for those he loves. While they are what? While they are what? While they are what? Yes. When they are asleep... I think it's Psalms, what, 27? 127? He, he, there's that place where when they're asleep, God starts working. When you're resting, when you enter rest, God starts what? Working. Because the devil knows that he, he, he can't... Is it so? Yes. It is vain for you to rise up early, to sit up late, to eat the bread of sorrows, for he giveth his beloved sleep. You see? So th- there, is, there is a place where... Some of you think that you need to also add on your, your energy. And your, in fact, unbelief. <laughs> Psalms 37 verse 4. I want to show you some. The Bible says, Delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. I read that verse and I was amazed that in the Hebrew language there, the word for delight, it's more of translated as make yourself happy. It doesn't mean that you're happy. <laughs> the, the word there for delight thyself. Hmm? Here you're not being delighted by circumstance. No. Situations are funny. Now you're going to sell always the same way. I don't know that you understand what I'm saying. I don't know that you understand what I'm saying. You, it's not that the situation is okay. No. It's funny. But then you say, no, let me make myself happy. He says, delight thyself also in the Lord. And he says, and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. Delight yourself also in the Lord. Wake up and make yourself happy in spite of the situation. That's called fight of faith. And Paul called it the good fight because it's good. You always win. It's good. But the devil's temptation is for you to fight Something else except faith. Except to believe. Fight to believe that it's fixed. Don't fight to. It's like one, one day somebody came to me and told me, I'm be- somebody, somebody came and they had, um, they were cancer. And then they told me, I am believing God for healing. And I told them, up square, you're going to die. I told them, you're going to die. You're in the you you you're believing for. <laughs> that means you have not acknowledged that ye were healed. I don't know they understand what I'm saying. You have not acknowledged that ye were healed. Do you know what is killing Africans these days? They are becoming like Europeans. They are conscious of everything. They go go check up, check my nose and see. Is that something? <laughs> what are you anticipating? What are you expecting? You, you're going for checkup. 
I know people who went for normal checkups and then they tell them, you, if you move out, you're going to die. <laughs> How did she come in? We had taken a, a person to be checked and then the doctor told me, can we also check you? Then they put me in the machine. Gwa. Then they said, well, you are two hours only <laughs> to die. That is why our fathers, our grandfathers lived long. Because there are no machines to make them attend to. <laughs> Hallelujah. Look into the word of God and see your health. This is the mirror. He says, and we behold, like in a mirror. If you want to check yourself, check yourself through the word. <laughs> I don't know that you understand what I'm saying. Check yourself through the what? Medical doctors know this. There are people who, when you check them, they are not supposed to be alive. So how do you explain that? There's a guy they checked and they told him, we are surprised you are alive. <laughs> are you feeling any pain? No. <laughs> Body weakness? No. <laughs> <laughs> and Peter says they have been kept by the power of God unto salvation. There it is. He speaks of them who are kept by the power of God through faith and to salvation. They are kept by the power through faith. Give me the amplified of that. He says, who are being guarded, oh, garrisoned by God's power through your faith. There are people God would keep, and that's why I told people that you can actually keep a man alive because you believe for them. <laughs> Hallelujah. You can keep a man alive and say, are you, you're not going to die. And then God honors your prayer. Hallelujah. But you have to choose whether you're kept by the power or by vitamin C. They both keep. They both what? Keep. But there's one, I'm not against uh, medicine. Medicine has its part. When you're in the process of believing. But there has to be a point where you believe. <laughs> I'm not against medicine. It's not a problem. No. But there comes a point where even the medicine says I can't. That is why the Bible says, We which have believed. Pastors, believed. Have entered. We do enter into rest. We which are not who are believing. Stop using those things of, I'm believing God for a job. That means you acknowledge you don't have it. No. Tell, when you're talking to a man of the Spirit, say, I thank God for my job. I thank God that I'm getting married. Oh, Apostle, I believed God for marriage for 20 years now. I believe you've believed. You've believed. You're, you're believing. You're believing. <laughs> Hallelujah. No, we have believed. Tell your neighbor, we have believed. Yeah. That is why you are a believer. You are a what? A believer. They just live by faith. The day you stop believing, you what? Period. There's no negotiation. Hallelujah. But now you have left your place of victory and you're going into fighting things. That is why the more you pray, the more they worship. Why? Because you're igniting them. You understand? You're fighting it. What are you doing? You're igniting it. You fight it, it comes out more. Why? Because you acknowledge it has power. It's worth your attention and time to fight it. That's why you're, you're not getting out of that attack. Because you acknowledge it is worth giving time. I will pray every day. Every day I will pray. Until this thing goes, I rebuke. I break. Then it worsens. Then you say, eh, what am I doing wrong? Then you say, now this time, eh? <laughs> Even the songs you sing, you realize, carry a certain epic picture of like a movie. Do you understand? Eh? 
Ngechitala chiri muchi. Sina kuba mutima, mutiri mongalo. That's why they hold their Bibles to sleep. <laughs> the word is not inside them. No. It's in the Bible. <laughs> then they put it under the pillow. Then they wake up. Then they walk with it. One time they called me to pray for an old man who had a cloth years ago. And every time he would say, Where is my rosary? Where is my rosary? They give him the rosary. He starts. What? He didn't get healed. Now we have had to first lay hands. This guy had a cloth. Listen. And when I was praying, some I got a vision that this guy somewhere had an issue with a land, issue with somebody. And somebody sent witchcraft to him. And that witchcraft appeared like a cloth. You know, doctors have names. It appeared like a what? <laughs> it was a cloth. Right? And then I asked them, is this guy in a certain land, land rango? They told me, yeah, he's in a land rango, da, 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 da. And I said, okay, for anointing oil on his land. Just phronesis. I could have even just sent it, but I wanted to make it more. <laughs> so that they said, my God, we poured the anointing on the, on the land. So we poured the anointing on the land. The, 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 the cloth in Kampala disappeared. Then they said, wow, this man of God. Even if I didn't pour. <laughs> but you know, when you carry epignosis, you choose how you want the miracle to be. <laughs> you choose how you want it to be. So that you can scare them a bit into believing. You don't just say it's done. No, you first make it a bit more epic. <laughs> that is a big gnosis. Determining the mode of action. Beholding the end in sight. Because you carry the liberty of the spirit to choose how you want to do it. That's a wisdom in the spirit. That's a wisdom in God. Jesus could have told a man's eye open, but then he spits on the ground. Then somebody gets a, a sudden and makes a tradition out of it. They think if you don't use oil, God won't heal. With or without oil, you carry the power. Hallelujah. But Jesus had to dip, heal differently because it was fun. You remember Paul? The hunkies that what? That touched the sick. He said when they touched the sick and then they were put, I mean they touched him and then they were put on, in the sick. Even them which were demon possessed. The Bible says the demons would flee. If he had chosen to say let me just send it. He would send it and it would still what? Work. If you were saying let me just kneel down and fix it. He would still fix it. But it was beautiful. Why? Because it's called special miracles. They are special. Tell your neighbor I'm special. I'm special. Tell the other one too and tell him I am special. I am special. Hallelujah. It's like sometime back, uh, these guys know the story, where one time I said, God, now anybody who is sick, the moment they call me, a woman called me with a swollen leg. You remember? Who remembers that story? The leg went back immediately. I said, yeah. I put some deep. <laughs> <laughs> But you see, there is nothing special about that. It's faith. Even you, you can choose. And say, anybody who looks at me. How do you create your words? Your world. You start talking certain things. The moment I enter a company, oh, you're in trouble. It's going to be a success. It's going to increase. I told people when I joined DTB, the man gave me a target. I told him that is too little. He thought he was going to scare me. I told him that is very little. And indeed, I went past it. Why? Because that's what you do. You, you enter your workplace like you're doing them a favor. Oh, hiring me is the best decision you have made. Are you hearing me? Praise God. Some of you have low self-esteem. You enter marriage, a man was to be married by you. Who am I? Oh no! Tell him, oh boy, you're marrying her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You heard the story of Obama and his wife? 
He told her <laughs> that I imagine if you had married another man. Michelle told him he would be the president. <laughs> He would be the president. That means she believes it was on her. It wasn't on him. It was on her. Faith. Hallelujah. You, you enter the world like you're a gift to eat. Situations can happen. Don't give a damn. Don't look at what. Uh, come on. He says, they that observe lying vanities forsake their own masses. You're looking at the wrong thing. You look at your shop and it's empty. And then you say, ay, 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 father, ay, ay, ay. No, 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 no. Look at it and smile. And see it full. I said, see it full. But then you enter into spiritual warfare. That thing, which is eating my things. So you actually acknowledge yours can be eaten. Yet the Bible says he maintains your lot. 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 There are people who believe the devil can steal from them things. Me, I don't believe. You, you can, but me, I don't. It's my faith. If I lose the phone, somebody needed it. I don't give it time and say, devil, that spirit which steals my phones. No. It happened once and I did exactly that. That was the last time I ever bought myself a phone. I don't buy myself phones. Somehow people just apostle, apostle, apostle. Why? Because I'm conscious of that. I'm conscious of that. Me, I can't be robbed. I can't. I can't. I can't. I can't even waste my time addressing the devil. We have a lot to talk with God. A lot. A lot. Some man left his wife and said, I'm going to the mountain. Don't call me back until poverty leaves this house. Mama, he almost died. He came back and found poverty on the door. I told him, welcome back, sir. Muno, he had cut a wire. I am not going to go out until. Who told you it's not fixed? I don't know if you get it. For we know the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. For though he was rich, the Bible says he made himself poor, that you might become rich. Now, if he has said you are rich, and then you go on the mountain until poverty leaves, you don't know what he did. You're igniting poverty. That is why many of you, what you pray against is increasing every day. You're breaking things that are increasing. You abuse it, it swells. You, have you noticed, usually when I'm praying for people, I just declare, this is living. This is living. This is living. Why? Because I can't say. And it doesn't live. I'm not conscious it, that, that it can't. Do you understand? He says, you shall decree a thing. And it shall be established. That is your faith. But some of you are igniting the wrong thing. You look at an empty house. Let me start in the name of Jesus. No. Look at it full. Rest in its fullness. That's called good fight of faith. Look at your bank account and see zero. Right? But then add one and more zeros. Me, I told people, I started this at campus long ago. I would get, the, when I see that I've remained with like 1,000, I add more zeros on it. You understand what I'm saying? More zeros. And some of my friends noticed it. Eh? My inner circle, when they found money with more zeros, they know that is Grace's money. <laughs> but you, you hold your 1,000 and say, Mukama. No, add a zero on it. And another zero. And another zero. He says, whatsoever. Because money, listen, money is an idea. 
Seriously. Money is not a value. Money is an idea. Look at it. It's 50,000. What made it 50? A man added a zero. How much did they use to make the same paper? The same amount they used to make a 20,000 note is the same amount they used to make a 50,000 note is the same amount they probably used to make a 2,000 note. They are all notes. Same amount of money used to spend on them. But an idea adds the zero. Oh, 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 oh. Eh? Add zero. Just add the zero. Just add the zero. God can't build where there is war. Rest. Rest. Find peace. That's why when it came to peace, the Bible says the chastisement. God had to discipline the Christ for you to have peace. He had to literally discipline Christ for you to have peace. Then the healing came. You see, the healing could not come before the peace comes. The healing could not come before the peace comes. You will not come out of things until you calm down, until you learn. God teaches you to be at peace amidst war. When things are happening the bad way, at that particular point you relax and smile. The day you broke, you put on makeup. Put on more higher heels. A bigger bag. That's the day you put on a suit and come to pray. Then they say, you look like money. Then you tell them, you're right. A money. But some of you dry your lips. Then you start walking poor. You come for prayers. And everybody says, Bambi, she must be poor. You're like a sick dog. That's called a spirit of, of what? Begging. You're begging in the spirit. Your, 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 your feet, you, you, look, you look like... Then you put those sullen, pathetic eyes when they are talking. Bambi has not eaten for some days. Then you're like... <laughs> the day you get in a place and you have not eaten, and then you walk to your friend and tell him, eh, I am full. I am full. The communication of your faith becomes effectual as you acknowledge every good thing which is in you. Which is banange. That's why may I tell you, I don't say it from here. I say it from my spirit. I cannot fail. Because I know how to fight. I know how to fight. I don't observe lying vanities. I don't. I don't. I don't. All oh, this has happened. It seems the Holy Spirit is not there. All oh, this has happened. It seems, oh, God has abandoned you. Oh, this has happened. Oh, it seems this one now. It seems you did this. Ay, 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 ay. No! I'm not conscious. I'm not conscious. Those are just tests to see whether you will lose it in the middle. The more stuff worsens is the more you cool down. The more stuff happens is the more you cool down. Don't raise fingers on it. Now you have to address it. Those are spirits. It's like I've been to many churches where they begin service by addressing demon spirits. Those are spirits that are holding back people from coming to pray. Let me tell you. Even if I came to Fanero and found four people, I cannot address them. Even if I found four people, I cannot address them. Why? Because I believe they can still come back. God can multiply and replace those who have left. That's my consciousness in the spirit. I'm not conscious that I can fail. I cannot. That, that, and many people on that test, they fail. They say, yeah, I think, ha. Huh? I think now, ha. Huh? I think I didn't pray more. <laughs> now there are people who pray. But are not anywhere. Because it's not about over praying. It's about knowing who you are. It's about knowing who you are. It's about knowing who you are. Hallelujah. I was called to minister to nations. That's me. Are you hearing me? I'm bigger than Uganda. 
I'm bigger than East Africa. I'm bigger than Africa. I'm not intimidated. I cannot be intimidated. You understand what I'm saying? I can't have a situation, any situation, and say, oh my God. Now, that's why we, can't, we don't fail. We cannot fail. Why? Because we, can't, we don't give opportunity to fail. Some of you, you've, you've put your, your story, your testimony on your monthly pay. They pay you one million shillings, and then you start calculating. Now, if I save one, five, one, 400,000 every month, in a circle. <laughs> that is 4 million in 10 months. That is 4.8 4.8 in one year. If I can save 4.8 for 10 years. Do you know how the law of exchange works? It adapts to the dispensation of purpose. There was a time... Ten, no, listen. There was a time 10,000 was a lot of money. Now it's not. There was a time 50,000 was a lot of money. Now it's not. If God says in the last days knowledge shall increase and everything increases with it, and then you think that that 10,000 is going to help in 2018. You're wrong. It even has nothing to do with the government. It's the law of exchange. And men who walk in it and function in it fully above it must understand that the world's to come are subject to you through the word. Are you hearing me? Then you start planning on your pay. Then you say, Kakati, if we save this much, I can build this. Then you start and, and, and there's a talk I've heard among us Christians, and I'm going to rebuke it so openly today. This thing of working your budget. <laughs> Let me explain it. If you're not a giver, you don't give your first fruits and tithes. Piece of advice work in your budget. <laughs> if you go out of your budget, you're in trouble. Rent the house that fits your pay. If you're not a giver. If you're Thessalonica. He says, like a mother cuddles her baby, I cuddle them. Corinth is learning when he reached Philippians, which were givers. He told them, my God shall supply all your needs according to your monthly pay. According to your salary. According to your annual bonus. He says, according to his riches in glory in Christ. When you understand that and you're a giver, you don't budget. You don't live in your budget. You enter a heavenly budget. Houses you never built. Vineyards you never planted. <laughs> Watch. 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 And I mean, I believe Fanero members are going to be some of the richest bunch. Watch. Because we don't plan on what we have. When you're conscious that you're a giver, are you hearing me? My God, I wish some of you understand what I'm saying. I remember the first time we went into car bonds. The money you have can't even buy a tire. <laughs> you sit in the car. You tell the guy, you know your maker. Then he tells you, 20 million. Then you say, mm, yeah, that's a fair price. Is there something more expensive? Go to Spear Motors. Enter there. Because where you go in the spirit or mind, you will go in the body. Now we can afford them. Now we can. Are you hearing me? Now this plot of land, yeah, ah, that one is for rich people. Now me, can I buy, there's a lady who is here, I don't know, I might not raise her up. One time we were preaching that thing of crazy faith. And then she went on a plot of land of 200 million. And what she told me was she had like 20 million. Then she went on it and stood there and, and she negotiated how much? They put her down, up. I must buy it, da, 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 you see. And she negotiated like a rich person. And she tells me within about, was it a week or two, 
Somebody out of the blue was led to give her that money. Eh? The world belongs to such people. If I want to take my child in a poor school because my wife, we have to be realistic. <laughs> you can never be as real as the faith you have. Faith is your reality. Set your bar high. Why? Because you're a believer. It's not what you have. It's not the country you live in. It's not your education level. It's not the connections. It's your spirit. Some of you are in third world and you act like your third world. Me, I'm a first world citizen. Super! All the way from Zion. What does the Bible say? You have come to what? Uganda? It says you have come to Zion. The city of the living God. To the company of innumerable angels. That is why you have come. Tell your neighbor I have come to Zion. I have come to Mount Zion. And what does the Bible say? Great things are spoken of thee. O city. That's, that's great things are spoken of us. Somebody got it. I don't know who, but somebody got it. He says, great things are spoken of Zion. Why? Because that's where you live. Great things might not be spoken of Africa, but they are spoken of Zion. Where do you live? It is a spiritual place. That is why he says, you, you've not come to a mountain that can be touched. All that can be seen. No. You've come to Zion. A heavenly experience. It's a realm. Where all believers live. Oh. Oh, we have in Uganda. Oh, oh, in Uganda. Poverty is in Uganda. It is in Uganda, but it's not in Zion. Sickness can be in Africa. But not in Zion. He says, in Zion, the inhabitants. He says, none shall say, I am sick. None. Ask your neighbor, where do you live? So, every time I see the people who say, Uganda is a third world country, I simply tell them, yours. Me, I'm not there. You know, people, you, you know, remember long ago, Boda Boda guys, you, those days you used to sit on border borders. And then a border border guy opens a silly conversation. Ah, brother, there is poverty in Uganda. <laughs> and you also sit on the border border and start contributing. Yeah. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. The government is what? The taxes are higher. The other day in the newspapers, they were saying, what, mama? The moment they start such cheap talk, you rebuke him immediately. Mugai, Mugai, and the silly mwab. Wake up, you don't wake up. Weep for yourself, not me. Not me. Not me. Not me. I refuse immediately. When I sit under such silly conversations, I refuse immediately. I say, nah, -uh. me, I'm not among those ones. I'm not among those ones. I'm not among those poor ones. You remember when I told you at the beginning of the year that money was going to be scarce? It has been scarce in Uganda. <laughs> God quadrupled our giving this year. We received four times more <laughs> than last year. <laughs> Why? Because me, when I see a poor man, a, a, a man selling because the economy is bad, I understand why he's selling for me to buy. You see, that's my mindset. He says, when they say there's a casting down, you shall say there's a lifting up. I refuse to be third world. I cannot be. I cannot be. He says, even though you're in this world, you are not of this world. Stop treating yourself like Ugandans. 
eating cheap food, then you become sick. Even angels say, ah, you fall sick. You deserve it. You've fallen from your estate. You remember the angels in Peter which fell from their estate. You left your place. You think Ugandan, you dress Ugandan, you act Ugandan, you even fight like a Ugandan. Hey, this will be the one of my Uganda. Yeah. Ah, no, 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 no. I want to finish. I want to finish. I don't finish. <laughs> oh. I have this feeling in a few years they are going to talk about us. They are. They are going to talk about you. They are going to talk about you. The craziest deals in the world are going to come to you. In the name of Jesus. And yes, you'll stay anointed and deep. In the name of Jesus. That's why for us we don't count on governments. Aliko Dankota is like three times richer than Uganda. What are you saying? One man. I mean, Bill Gates is like three or so times. What, what are you talking about? One man is richer than a state, three times. And then even you in your nation, you have rich people. Your nation. I refuse. <laughs> Hallelujah. And don't worry, again I repeat, you'll stay deep. And anointed. The solution that is going to change this world is not anywhere, it's in us. It's in here. It's in here. It's in here. I can't read scriptures like you shall learn to nations. And I'm still borrowing Poso. Some of you have books on shops. Then after you come for service. No, if it's enough, don't beg for sugar. I was younger, now I'm old. I've never seen the righteous forsaken. Neither their seed begging bread. Luke 8, 11. The seed is the word. I can't preach a sermon that begs you. It's not pride. It's knowing who I am. Now we have a lot of problems in Fanero. You see, this thing is what? Please, hear it, parts. I cannot do that. No. I just tell you God is going to do this. And then you realize, okay, I'm a partaker. Because the Bible says, my expectation is from Him. Now, stop igniting things by fighting them. Any circumstance that is surrounding you, learn to calm down and cool. Just be, find peace. Let them look at you and say, go away, Sigachi. You know, even parents have a way of making us anxious. They start comparing you with your neighbor's daughter. Now Gundi got married. So and so built a house. You, what are you doing? So and so bought land. Calm down. When I come, Even my dad used to say, they your neighbor's kids. They are doing this. I told him, daddy. I'm bigger than those ones. Those things of, oh, then also you go to pressure. Then you say, hey man, whatever they've said is true. I don't have anything. You have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellence of glory might be of the Lord. The moment they compare, you say, ah, Mose, I'm richer than that one. <laughs> Bring another example. Oh, your friend, they're not married. Ah, uh-uh. Mose, that one had to marry because they needed to rush into it. They needed it. Me, I'm kawa. Be at peace. That's called the fight of faith. Because if you're sure something is going to come, you have no reason to worry about it. 
No reason. No reason to worry about it. No reason. Hallelujah. That's why my meditations are delights. They are delights in the Lord. Oh God, I thank you. Somebody speak to God. You make my life so beautiful. For as you are, you have made me, you are not. There's nothing greater than me. That's why I love you. I want you to take a minute and create one of the most craziest ones to live in. Are you ready with me? Are you ready with me? Now start to say crazy things. Come on. This is your future.
by grace which strengthens you. That you are ahead in this world. That you are well represented in the other realm. The lines have fallen unto you in pleasant places. You have a good inheritance. You are a success. Everything you touch, it is blessed. You will not fail. You cannot fail. You will never fail. Greater is he that is in you than the devil in the world. Give the Lord a mighty hand of praise. The devil is in trouble. Listen. Listen. He says, For all things are yours. All things are yours. Africa is ours. Europe is ours. We are going nations. Vanero is breaking every nation. That's what I believe. I carry an influence over the world. My message is for the world. By the millions and billions. In Jesus mighty name. That's what I believe. What do you believe? Hallelujah. I'm going to go home. I'm going to sleep well tonight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen, there are things that seem like they are big, but they are becoming small. Hallelujah. Give me one minute before you leave. I want us to give an opportunity to somebody who says, I have not given my life to Christ. I want to accept Jesus as my Lord and Savior. Put up your hand wherever you are. You want to be born again? Put up your hand. Anybody? Bring them. Bring them. Bring them. Bring them. If you want to be born again, bring them. Just bring them here. She came with both hands. I call you. I call you. We need very thick goggles to look at your future. Because it's too bright. <laughs> now, look, look at this great harvest. Young people coming to God. Heaven, there is a party in heaven now. I see one angel telling Paul, pass me that meat. (laughs) 
Now, I want all of you to repeat these words after me. All right? Say, Lord Jesus, I thank you because you died for me and rose for me and ascended into heaven for me. Say today, I believe with my heart, I confess with my mouth that I'm born again. I receive you as Lord and Savior of my life. Amen. Hey! Who want to retest by your names? We love you guys. The message you have just heard was brought to you by Fenero Ministries International. For more information, contact us on telephone number 041-466-4291 or email us at fenerocompala at gmail.com. You can also find us on the web at www.fenero.org. Or better still, feel free to join us every Thursday for our weekly fellowships at Uma Multipurpose Hall from 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. You can also catch the live stream at livestream.com slash Fenero. Fenero. Make manifest.